Alrighty, guys. I don't know how many times we've talked about Moms for Liberty on this channel, uh, but if you don't know who they are, I'm just going to go ahead and say they're basically an anti-LGBTQ hate group. I mean, there's more information than that, but really, that's the relevant info at this point. But they have an interesting take on mental health care in Florida schools. So... Let's get into that, shall we? But first, let's get into the fan art section. This one is from Mish Monster, Chat Pickle Rick, and Pickle Cirrus in a Jar. Uh, okay, that's um. Why am I blushing? Why am I blushing? I'm getting away from that. This one is from Aaron Primet. It is a very large one. Finished my fan art of Slime Rancher Cirrus, but the file is too big for Discord. We've got a Slime Cirrus down here. We've got what looks... Is that Nova? Could be Nova. I could be wrong. We've got a coin barbecuing. We've got Dryer Coon over here along with Timer Coon. Hold Chan is back here as well. There's all kinds of stuff here. A very, very detailed and intricate fan art, and I like it a lot. The last one said Tabby Slime or Nova as a slime. It's one of the two. Never. It's one of the two. Everyone's bitmax has already been reached. God dang it. Hi, Hurricane. How you doing? The next one we have here is from Emerson J. Uh, no, this is from Ariane. My first Blender 3D model fully painted. Not great, but not bad. You know... He certainly has a look that a designer could love. So did you play Slime Rancher and I missed it? No, I did not. That is just one of the things that Aaron apparently enjoys a lot. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. And with that said, you should probably subscribe. That's the thing you should probably do. Subscribing is good. I should I should know. I I am I am the one that invented subscribing fairly certain. Right? That, that's the thing I did? Huh. Oh, well. I, I I guess I didn't. I can't Al Gore this today. Let's go ahead and get into today's topic. This one comes to us from Yahoo. Because they're a bunch of Yahoos. Moms for Liberty says no to mental health care in schools, but it's Florida law. Moms for Liberty has been a vocal supporter of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and his attempt to win the GOP nomination for president. Both the governor and education commissioner Manny Diaz were guest speakers at the group's national convention in June. But Moms for Liberty's latest item in their parents' rights agenda collides with the states, including DeSantis's position on mental health in schools. In a social media post last week, Moms for Liberty wrote, Healthcare has no place in public schools. What? Get... Okay. Okay. I need... I need... I need help? I need... Why? Why is this the take? How is this the take? How do you get to this stage in your life? Well, play it, nerd. It's good for you in fairy fitting. Play what? Oh. Oh, Slime Rancher. Oh. I can't ranch my own kind. But healthcare has no place in public schools. How are you going to get to doctors then? As a response to President Joe Biden announcing his new strategy to improve mental, hair, uh, mental health care by adding more providers and expanding access. They said, mental health care is health care, Mr. President, and that's why it has no place in public schools. Hashtag parental rights. That is what Moms for Liberty... Po why? <laughs> why? How do you get there? Look, y'all are going to need mental health care. All of you will. I have been wearing glasses the entire time in this video, and I have never gaslit my audience once in my life. But realistically, how, how do you come up with this take? How do you get to this stage 
in your career as an activist where you're trying to say that mental health care is health care, which it is, and therefore it has no place in public schools. I think you might be right, Meyer Lurk. The idea that healthcare is political and that's the brain rot we're working with. Agamotto says, so no school nurses? Yeah, no, no school nurses. None, none at all. Not not a single one. How will the kids ever survive without that particular uh, kink in their repertoire? Silent Hill will not create it for them. We have to. Hammy says they don't like mental health care because it makes them jealous because they don't. Mental health care requires a brain. That's why it's ableist. <laughs> That's a better angle. That's an angle that you could probably run with for at least a little bit. It's got the accuracy for it. In Florida, mental health care has been a top bipartisan pr uh, priority since 2018, when a shooter killed 17 children at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. And then there's, of course, the actual post from Moms for Liberty. I I want I want to look at this post. I want to look at this post real quick. It's got to be. It's definitely got to be something here. They clarified. Read what you wrote here. Yes, healthcare has no place in public schools. Good lord. This organization is all about creating outrage and attempt to anger suburban moms, a group the GOP has been steadily losing. This doesn't even make sense. What's next? No drinking fountains in schools? The water might be woke! <laughs> For an organization that prides itself on protection of children, it's looking very fascist of you to want to exclude mental and physical health care from schools. Are you really looking out for children, or are you just wanting America to become like Nazi Germany? Well, nope. Nazi Germany had school nurses for the Aryan kids. <laughs> Imagine being worse than the OG Nazis. Then I guess you're against physicals to play in sports? How will you discriminate against the trans kids then? <laughs> in a world full of... A word I'm not British enough to say, you're my favorite. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god, I love this name for them. I've never seen this one. Clan Karenhood. <laughs> Clan Karenhood. I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh my god. How? How does it fit so well? Oh my god. Ah. Uh... From the MSD Public Safety Act, a landmark piece of bipartisan legislation which provides unprecedented levels of funding for mental health in public schools, to our First Lady's Hope Her Healing Initiative, which focuses on addressing our kids' mental health and preventing substance abuse, we've made clear students' mental health and well-being is a shared concern and a priority which transcends party lines, said Senator Lauren Book D. Davey. But the push to fund mental health initiatives has frustrated Moms for Liberty Sarasota County, uh, County Chapter. Uh, her, the chair is named Alexis Spiegelman uh, and other conservative parents who consider mental health care as another version of social emotional learning and are campaigning to get it removed from school. Here's a hot take. Moms for Liberty doesn't want mental health care in schools because they need people to be so thoroughly brain rotted, confused, and hurt by the time they are adults, that they are willing to turn to any organization for community. And then Moms for Liberty can increase its numbers of constituents. That's my fan theory. In the last few years, SEL, which teaches skills such as self-awareness, that's good, empathy, good, resilience, hey, I'm on the internet long enough to, to know that the phrase you wouldn't survive a Call of Duty lobby actually has some merit, so yes, that's a good thing. But apparently they've been linked to academic concepts like critical race theory and has then been labeled as woke indoctrination. You know how I mentioned that if you are anti-something and it is the only aspect of your personality which I can latch onto, eventually you start becoming a bit of a problem? Like, okay, I'm anti-fascist, but imagine for a w moment if the only aspect of my personality that existed was anti-fascism. After a while, I would imagine that, um, 
I would see myself as a bit of a hammer, and boy howdy will everything else start looking like a nail. This is why you don't define yourself against things. You define yourself based on what you are. Because eventually, you get to this point where things become insane. Things become very, 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 very hard to look at objectively. Because when you get to the point where mental health is woke indoctrination, you know you've crossed that particular line. Maybe you should stop looking at everything as nails and start looking at people as people. Sub series, hope you are well. How's also it... down with fascism. How's it going, Vash Bandicoot? <laughs> Thank you for the tier one subscription. In Florida, the Department of Education has recently distanced itself from SEO and rebranded it as resiliency, but Spiegelman says it's all semantics. Many families feel our conservative majority is not listening to the very people that helped get them elected, said Spiegelman, who clarified that she only speaks for her county's chapter, not the national organization. <laughs> Sure you do. The Florida legislature, along with the governor, are not helping matters. They are actively pushing SEL indoctrination into our schools and communities through the recent legislation and additional state funding. Okay. I said maybe you should start getting nailed. <sighs> not an option for me. Not an option for me. But, you know, I, when I'm done with my stream and Saki's done with her stream, who knows what'll happen. They're actively pushing SEL indoctrination. Florida school districts are required to have mental health care under the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Safety Act. The half-billion-dollar package signed into law by Flor uh, former Florida Governor Rick Scott in 2018 had a threefold focus, addressing gun laws, school safety, and mental health. Also, uh, Zer Connick, thank you very much for the follow. Said, wait, your partner streams? Did everybody do that? Yeah, she's, she's streaming right now. Here, let me just go ahead and... And just go boop, doo to do, Saki underscore Nightshade. You, you could go, you could go follow her right now. She is currently playing Slay the Spire, and I could, I could get up and go into the bedroom where she is currently streaming if I wanted to. Because we don't have a lot of extra rooms in the house, but we did convert a portion of the bedroom into her mini office. So I didn't know she was live also? Well, you'd know that if you followed her, which is a thing you can do right now. It's a shout out. It's a call to action. And I'm doing it all on a video that's going on YouTube where nobody is going to click those buttons, but they could. I'll probably put it in the comment section. Who knows? Nami says, Sirius, <laughs> I'm being a dick, Nami. I'm being an asshole. <laughs> I'm being an asshole. I've been following her for a long time. I know. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just being a dick, Nami. Since then, Florida Legislature and the Florida Department of Education have shored up the measure and passed more mental health requirements. For example, last year, Governor signed a law that requires school districts to certify that at least 80% of school personnel have Bunk received Bunk's asshole youth. series with drywall. Thanks, Fred Joker. <laughs> For the 500 bits. Said you are what you eat, bro. How'd you know? But at least 80% of school personnel have received youth mental health awareness training. Every child needs a safe and secure learning environment, DeSantis said in a statement on the day he signed the bill. According to the DOE's Resiliency and Mental Health Resources section of the website, every Florida public school is required to provide students in grades 6 through 12 at least five hours of mental health instruction each year. That ain't a whole lot. That ain't a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. It's, it's you know, the same as having a few credit hours in a college course. It's something. A priority of First Lady Casey DeSantis, mental health instruction has renamed to resiliency education uh, and life skills education in 2022, but the term mental health is still used throughout the page of resources, which is a good thing. Building resiliency for Florida students and families is a top priority of the Florida Department of Education. But one chapter says that mental health in school fuels leftist agenda. God, reality has a left-wing bias, and it's hilarious. But... Moms for Liberty, a conservative parents' rights group, exploded onto Florida's 
political scene in 2021 with combative protests against school mask mandates. In the two years since, the school has gained members across the state and the nation, packing school board meetings with public comments about books, LGBTQ guides, and sex education. <clears throat> the Moms for Liberty organization did not return USA Today's uh, Florida request for comment about the tweet and its position on mental health care. The DeSantis administration has endorsed Moms for Liberty in uh, their school board races across the state. In Sarasota, Moms for Liberty backed candidates helping overturn the ideological makeup of the school board, where a new conservative-leaning board took over and immediately moved the fire uh, to fire the sitting superintendent, Brennan Aspel. Sarasota School Board Chair Bridget Ziegler, a Moms for Liberty member, was also appointed by the governor into the controversy-filled Central Florida Tourism Oversight District Board, which was created to oversee the governance of Walt Disney World after the entertainment mega company publicly opposed his Don't Say Gay legislation. It says so-called here because it is a news organization that has to, but let's be honest, <clears throat> we know what was going on there. Jesus. G bus. They said 2024 is going to be the year where parents across the country finally fight back. Oh no! The 2021 is going to be the year they finally fight back. 2018 is going to be the year they finally fight back. 2016 is going to be the year the conservatives finally fight back. Oh god! Every single time, every time I see that stupid call to action. We're going to finally fight back against the woke organization or some madness. Some craziness. Every year is the year that they're going to flip the script, change the ways things are going to go, and they're going to finally fight back against the things they don't like. Always. Always. There's always a status quo that they need to overturn. There's always something that is evil lurking in the in the deep. The enemy is always simultaneously too weak to come to the debate table, but so strong they have to unite against it. Spiegelman said the reality in her school district is not what shows up in the headlines. She says, we are very disappointed that uh, what was promised during the campaign is not at all happening in our district. In a recent Sarasota Moms for Liberty chapter newsletter, the organization calls out the uh, state and county leadership for bringing even more social-emotional learning into our school under the guise of mental health. Social-emotional learning is fine. Your kids need it. Evidence? You exist. You needed it when you were a child. <laughs> kind of like a certain authoritarian group from recent history. Hmm... It appears that the leftist agenda has not skipped a beat as the permanent administrative state, who outlast any figurehead change on the board, marched in unobstructed by our new board with their continued sexualization and alienation of children from families. This agenda is aided by the Florida State Legislature, Governor Ron DeSantis, and the Resiliency Toolkit. <laughs> or... Maybe you're just crazy. Maybe you're just upset that people are learning to not be afraid of random shit. Maybe you need some social emotional learning. Just maybe. Just maybe. Tanya Fitzgerald, the mental health coordinator for Leon County Schools, says she's not heard from any parents who say they don't want mental health care in schools. If anything, she's been told the opposite. They want more. When asked for a comment, Leon County's Moms for Liberty chapter president Priscilla West said she does not speak for the national organization. She says, I only speak for my chapter. I'll try to familiarize myself with the context or specific story behind that tweet. Local mental health counselors in Leon County say students are experiencing more anxiety since the pandemic. Of course they are. It makes sense. Also, Nami, thank you for the hydrate. According to the CDC, uh, more than four in 10 kids felt personally sad or hopeless, and nearly one third experienced poor mental health in 2021. Meanwhile, more than one in five students seriously considered attempting suicide, and one in 10 attempted it. 
The state requires every school district to develop policies and procedures to involve mental health professionals if a student is in crisis, which could include an involuntary mental health examination, which has been the mental health coordinator. Uh, she's been the mental health coordinator for the last six years. An involuntary organization known as the Baker Act allows doctors, health professionals, and judges and law enforcement to commit someone for psychiatric evaluation and can be done either voluntary or involuntarily. About 12% of involuntary examinations of children during the 2021 to 2022 fiscal year were initiated in schools. Leon County has seen a rise in Baker Acts among its students, and in 2022, that number dropped by uh, 11%. <clears throat> so, what's the takeaway here? I, I jokingly said that an organization like Moms for Liberty cannot survive without people who are so thoroughly paranoid about the world around them that they are willing to turn to literally anybody to try to make things right. And if they had had a little bit of knowledge uh, growing up on how to deal with their own mental health problems, then maybe they wouldn't have created an organization filled with such hate, vitriol, and stupidity. I say that as a joke, but I don't know if it's terribly inaccurate, actually. And I kind of hate that, because it should be inaccurate. That should not be a takeaway from me. But the more I learn about Moms for Liberty, the more I'm convinced that nobody who is truly happy, healthy, or stable is a part of this organization. Because I don't think... It, they can do the whole, this is not what my chapter represents, this is not what this chapter represents. They can do that all they want, but... At the end of the day, all I'm seeing is a whole bunch of people who don't know what they're talking about and are doing everything in their power to make sure that everybody around them doesn't know what they're talking about either and agrees with them about stuff they don't know about. Especially when it comes to LGBTQ education, mental health education, and, I mean, don't even dare mention the word diversity around any of these people. Bash Bandicoot says they've normalized their own abuse and shitty things they've dealt with, and all things that push against that are bad and wrong and against the status quo. It's like the person who... Uh, was beaten as a kid by their father and grew up going, but it made me the man I am today. It's like the person who witnesses a mother that gets angry and throws a jar of jelly at the wall and destroys it. And they've normalized that. They've said, no, I had a pretty okay childhood, actually. It talks about the things that they love and they loved collecting, getting destroyed by their parents with an awkward measure of abject fondness. It's kind of like that. It's a weird thing to watch. You can't go to these people usually and mention, hey, that was abuse. Hey, you've dealt with trauma. A lot of times they just deny it and go, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I have no problems. I'm perfectly stable. Everything's okay. And if they are, it's not because all that happened to you. It's in spite of it. But... Who knows? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here.